Hello and welcome back to Smoke Control Gamer, Nintendo November, episode 14, Metroid Prime. This is my favorite game ever, I, I think. Probably. Yeah, I don't know. So, um, instead of starting at the beginning, I already have a file here, as you can see. I, I didn't get that far, so I figure, let me just do that. And it's 9.30 here, so I may stop at around 10.30 or 11, let's see. So, let's get to it. Um, I'm just using my Xbox controller. I have a GameCube controller and the adapter and all that, but I just didn't feel like digging it out of the closet or wherever it ended up. So. And I mapped the buttons a little differently, but that's okay. So hopefully I won't be hitting the wrong buttons like I was in Eternal Darkness a month ago. We'll see. Alright, cool. And hopefully this won't run like shit either, because this is running in Dolphin at 1440p with some anti-aliasing, texture filtering, and all that. Um, I just hope I don't have to lower the settings, though. So this game is still impressive, because, you know, you have these effects where, like, you know, your mask gets all fogged up and shit. Okay. So, this is my first time I got into Magmore Caverns. Okay. Got it. Yeah, and I just love the map in this game, and a lot of other games have copied it, but um, most notably, I think that Star Wars game used a system like this. I do not have double jump yet, okay. Of course, Metroid Prime was the, you know, was Metroid turned into a first-person shooter. And when I first heard about it, I think I remember thinking, like, how is that going to work? And this, remember, too, this was at a time when shooters weren't, like, super popular yet. Um, at least not on console. And it was just kind of like, how is that even going to work? And they pulled it off. I mean, this game was cutting edge when it came out, and by today's standards... On a modern system, it still looks pretty damn good. So, I really hope uh, the whole trilogy makes it to Switch without the goddamn motion controls. Yeah, that is a pretty gruesome death right there. Actually, this seems to be running okay, so hopefully it won't stutter too much. I don't want to have to lower settings, that's just annoying, but... I could run this at 4K, but I might have to lower the anti-aliasing and stuff. Ah, crap. Um... So, in general, like, a lot of first-person platformers have been difficult over the years. But this, this does it pretty well, I'd say. Because sometimes, right, you fall in the lava because you can't see underneath you. Alright. So, and I don't have the grappling hook yet. I could probably just run over there, but... That's the only thing, is sometimes you can't see your feet, and therefore you don't know if you're actually going to land on the platform or not. Um, like, I'm not going to fucking lava anyway. Oh, 
Oh yeah, it's stuttering like crazy when I go into Morph Ball. How about that? But they really did a good job with the targeting system, plus you can still manually aim, you can lock on to targets. And it's Metroid, I mean... Metroid's just awesome, so... Ah, crap, I thought I could... Ah! I can't jump on that. Okay, now you tell me. Wonderful. <laughs> this sucks. Wow. Okay. I know, but I don't have the grappling hook. It's always important to scan the environment. But this was the best part of the game, and it, you could argue, like, I really liked this kind of optional story where if you choose to scan every object, you can get some information and you can get some lore entries, and you read them when you feel like it. So for the most part, the game doesn't really get bogged down with um, cutscenes and whatnot. And yet, it's kind of hard to tell if you can actually make a jump or not in some areas. I, th Why do I want to say that there's something in that pillar? I'm gonna have to wait until later in the game. I think it's one of the keys you need in the final area. So, I guess... So where does this take place in the timeline? I want to say it's either before the original game or it's after everything. I'd have to look that up. Let me see. I see, yeah, now it made it small. Oh, hi there. Alright, um... Actually, I was just gonna look that up real quick. Metroid Timeline. Let's just take a look. Okay, so... Oh, that's interesting, alright. So the original Metroid in Zero Mission takes place first. Okay. But then Metroid Prime happens. And then Metroid 2, and then Super Metroid, then Other M, then Fusion, then Dread. Okay, so Dread is the newest in the timeline. I knew that. But Prime takes place between Metroid 1 and 2. Okay. And this has Samus going to Talon 4 to stop space pirates from doing something, and she, of course, finds out that Ridley's back to life because he's immortal or something, or apparently Ridley can just come back to life whenever he wants. <laughs> um, and then you discover that there's Phazon on this world, and you learn about the original beings that inhabited it, and learn more about Samus's past, that the, the Chozo runes and all that. So, yeah, okay. Well then, you've never, you've never played Metroid Prime, huh? Well, I'm not sure how well it holds up today, to be honest. I want to say it holds up pretty well, but maybe not, I don't know. Oh, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to play it in windowed mode so I can still see the chat. Alright. Yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite games. I just played it so much when I was a teenager. Um, 
it's not for everyone. Yeah, there are people who, who have told me flat out, like, Metroid should be 2D, period, and it's like, alright, well... Um, I, I did not like Prime 3 because I don't like motion controls. But then this is another cool thing that goes into third person when you're in ball form. So there's a really funny, well, maybe it's not funny, but there's a lore entry where it describes space pirate scientists trying to duplicate the morph ball and talks about all the injuries that were sustained by all the test subjects. It's not really funny, but then again, space pirates are garbage people, so... Yeah, because they would try to compress their bodies the way Samus does, but they would break every bone in their body. <laughs> yeah, I just love how all the lore is optional, and this is probably what inspired the minimalist storytelling of Dark Souls and other series. I like that you can just ignore most of it if you want to, or you can read it. But basically, I miss the days when games actually let you play them. So, like, I still have no excitement for God of War Ragnarok, because I didn't beat the previous one, because there's too many goddamn cutscenes and pointless conversations. It's like, just let me kill stuff. And that's a, a common thread amongst... All of the Sony exclusives, like, they're not bad games, but there's just such a huge focus on cutscenes, dialogue, like Uncharted 4 was just, had horrible pacing. Because you can't go more than 10 minutes without a goddamn cutscene. Oh, see, I, I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about playing Turok this month, yeah, that's, Yeah, so I, I don't like when a game, like, just as an example, um, Uncharted 4, or The Last of Us Part 2, or God of War, like, I don't like this new thing of, okay, you get ten minutes of combat, then you gotta solve three puzzles, then a platforming section, then in a ten minute cutscene, then a whole string of pointless dialogue, and then maybe you get five more minutes of combat, you know? I don't think they balance the different elements out properly in some of those games. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Metal Gear Solid 4, when that came out, that was like, wow, this is more movie than game. And it had to install part, like, it would install part of the game onto the hard drive, and you'd have to sit there and watch, watch it do it. And then when you got to the next act, it would delete that data to install more data. It was weird. Because the PS3 only had like 30 gigabytes at the time. Yeah. But now Metal Gear Solid 5, I thought, did a better job with just letting you play. You know, you can just go do side quests or just roam around the open areas without having to go back to base. Yeah. But anyways... So Metroid Prime 1 and 2, just huge focus on exploration and, um, yeah, just a huge focus on combat, exploration, but there's still puzzles. You can scan objects, which is fun, see? But you have to 100% the game to get the final post credit scene. Yes, I don't mean to pick on Sony, but they have been definitely slacking off for a while, you know? They raised the price on the PS5. They want to charge 70 bucks for exclusive titles. They're trying to tank the Microsoft Activision deal by making hypocritic, uh, hypocritical arguments against it. And it's like, yeah.
Yeah, see, Final Fantasy XIII is another one of my favorite games, but you could skip every cutscene in that game. Yeah, I, I got the Series X first because I figured going forward the various um, Bethesda titles would go straight to Game Pass, of course, then um, Deathloop and the other game, Ghostwire Tokyo, end up being timed exclusives on PlayStation anyways. But in the future, you know, I want to be able to just play, like, Elder Scrolls 6 or Fallout 5 as soon as it hits Game Pass. Um, so that, that was part of my decision there. The Series X is, um, well, I mean, so with the holidays coming up, people are probably looking to get one of those consoles. And yeah, Series X does a better job, I think, with backwards compatibility, with enhancing old games. Um, plus, you got Game Pass. It does a better job with multimedia and entertainment, so... You have Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision support, um, and you can still buy and rent UHD movies and TV shows, whereas Sony got rid of um, the ability to purchase movies. Um, plus, now both consoles do have support for 120Hz, variable refresh rate and all that, although it just depends on the game, too. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, neither system has any really exceptional... Well, I shouldn't say exceptional. I should say that neither system has that many, like, exclusives that actually require the console. Like, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is, like, one of the best games I've ever played, but all of the other Sony exclusives are still playable on PS4 Pro, and all of the Microsoft exclusives are still playable on PC and the older models. So... It just depends on what you want to play, really, but the Demon Souls remake, to me, was total garbage because it's a garbage game, and updating the graphics does nothing to make that game any more bearable. Like, I hate that game. I don't care what it looks like, you know? Where am I going? <laughs> um, now, the thing is, but if Microsoft thinks they're gonna, like, catch up to Sony by just pumping out... Forza, Gears, and Halo over and over again, then they got another thing coming. You know? Like, we need another Ori game. How about ReCore 2? How about, you know, other franchises that have been dormant for decades? How about another Viva Pinata game? That'd be fun. So Microsoft has more in the pipeline than Sony does right now, but Sony has already released more exclusives, and they've arguably better exclusives, so both companies really dropped the ball with regards to software, I would say. I would say if, if, you know, if you want to get either console, you want to get one or the other, you don't really care which one, I think you should prioritize the Series X, to be honest. Unless you really, really want to play Ratchet & Clank, which I don't blame you because it's amazing. Um, whereas, like, Returnal was not that great. Like, I love Housemark, I love Stardust, Resogun, Nex Machina, but... Returnal was too fucking hard for me. I don't know how else to say it. Why am I going this way? I don't know. I, I thought... Th yeah, okay. Now, the only thing with this game... They make you work really hard for these uh, missile tanks. Like, you go through this whole elaborate obstacle course here, you know? And it's like, oh, great, another fucking missile tank. What do you do? God damn it, I'm gonna die in that lava. Ow. Now, of course, this is an old school game that will send you back to your last manual save every time you die, and there's no auto save, so. Gotta be careful. Now. Metroid Dread, I'm not going to say it was a bad game. It certainly wasn't. I personally thought it was too damn hard. 
I personally thought there was, um... I often felt like I was playing a Resident Evil game. Like, with the, the way the Emmy robots chase after you. Um... Where was I going with this? <laughs> yeah. So... Dread is certainly not a bad game, I just thought it was too hard. And I know they added an easier difficulty. But see, okay, the, the nice thing I can say about Dread is that there are plenty of healing stations and checkpoints and save stations. Like, I like that it auto-saves right before every boss. What I don't like is that it took me sometimes 10 or 15 tries to kill some of the bosses. So... <laughs> I remember. Yeah, so... Right, well, that's a good point about Game Pass, actually. Is Yeah, it's like, you never know when things are just going to get pulled off. And then you end up having to buy the game anyways if you want to keep playing it. Although, at a discount. So... Yeah, see, the, the thing is, um, one of the reasons I got Series X first was because I got an email from GameStop saying, tomorrow you can get one. It was like, oh, okay. And then they were offering the all-access, so you could finance the console with two years of Game Pass for, like, 800 bucks, and you just make monthly payments. So that was a lot. That's what made it affordable for me, and then I was able to sell the One X. So, yeah, the backwards compatibility was great because it let me sell the old consoles to mitigate the cost. If it weren't for um, backwards compatibility, then I would say, like, you could easily wait another year to see how many more uh, games come out, you know. But I, I will say I've been impressed with the third-party offerings over the past few years. Like, Resident Evil Village was amazing. I liked Far Cry 6. Um... You know. And that's about it, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then another good Sony exclusive is a Sackboy, A Big Adventure, if you like 3D platformers that aren't too difficult. Although it is kind of a pain in the ass to go back and unlock the post-game world, uh, post-game levels. Oh, and then, so here's a cool thing this game does, too. It kind of just outright tells you, oh, hey, you can totally go there to get the thing you need. Oh, that's right, I was supposed to blow him up like that. Okay. So yeah, here's a game that came out 20 years ago, and look at this, like, foliage and how it reacts to shooting it. Um, there's some awesome lighting and fog effects. Like, the GameCube was a very powerful system. But PS2 won the won that generation because it was the cheapest system, but it was the cheapest because it was the least powerful. You know, what are you going to do? And from that perspective, um, that's why the Wii was so successful. It was cheaper because it was less powerful. But yeah, I had a GameCube when I was a teenager. Oh, the PS2 had exceptional exclusive titles, sure. Yeah. Yeah. B 
Beyond Good and Evil 2 was announced, but yeah, I haven't seen anything else from it. I'm sure there'll be a trailer at the Game Awards. I did not play Vampire Survivors. I heard it was good, though. So where the hell am I going right now? I think I wanted to go save so I don't die. Okay, but why am I over here, though? There's something over here. Oh, yeah. Look, there's a door. Or there's something up there, maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, I don't have the boost yet. Okay. I do not have the boost yet. So I'm probably not going to play this in its entirety. But this was definitely something I wanted to play during this month. of the elevators in this game, too. But yeah, if you have a computer that's good enough to run uh, Dolphin in 4K on, like, max settings, definitely do that, because, like, you can see these reflections are pretty impressive looking. I, you know, I wonder if somebody could mod this to add ray tracing. That'd be fucking phenomenal. Okay, so where the hell am I going now? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. That would be cool. I'd like to see that. Absolutely. That's right. You, yeah, you said you got a 3080. That's a good card. Okay, I probably skipped this in the beginning because I probably couldn't get underneath that. Okay. Goddamn space pirates! You sons of bitches. Yeah, and I like how the uh, missiles have homing now. Oh yeah, look, this is Phazon. It's Phazon. Ah! That stuff will kill you. So, similar to Super Metroid, there's a wrecked ship that you can't get to without the grappling hook. And if I fall in the water, I'll have... Yeah, you also have to get the anti-gravity suit to traverse underwater properly. Alright. Yes, Goldeneye. Um, so, yeah, so I'm glad that Goldeneye is finally coming back the only thing is that it's just it's really just it's odd because so the original n64 game is going to the switch online service which is good um <clears throat> and personally i thought they did a pretty good job with some of those n64 games on there i think they look fine but um that version will have online multiplayer whereas xbox is getting a full like 4k remaster but no multiplayer. So it's like, that's kind of weird, you, you know. 
you get one or the other. And GoldenEye is like the one game that is just just doesn't run good on most of the emulators I've tried. Did I scan these already? Nope. So if you want to 100% the game, you have to scan every scannable object. I need the double jump to go up there. Okay, I knew that. Oh, and I don't think there's no fall damage in this game either. Although I don't think there's fall damage in any match. So yeah, one of my favorite bad games is Metroid Other M. That was something we were talking about uh, a few weeks ago, I think. Um, this is the yeah, yeah, Xbox controller. Um, I I do have the original. Uh, oh no, I I have the Super Smash Bros. GameCube controller, and I have the old Wii U adapter, but I just felt like using the Series X controller. Yeah. Um, DualSense probably works. Uh, yeah, because it, I think it depends, because my Chromebook can read my DualSense no problem, and I can use it in all my emulators, but the Chromebook's not powerful enough to run GameCube, so. Oh, Sonic Frontiers, yeah, I definitely want to get that, so 40 hours sounds good to me, yeah. Yeah, I think Sonic Frontiers already went on sale for Black Friday and all that, but but I, I didn't finish Saints Row or the Quarry, and here I am playing, you know, a 20-year-old game that I've beaten like 10 times before. Oh, well. Yeah, I was just really busy on Thursday and Friday, and I wasn't sure if I was going to stream today, but I did. I don't think I can get through this room yet. Or at least not safely. Let's see. Oh yeah! See, I don't have the uh, spider ball. That was something they brought back from Metroid 2. But you can only do it on those special tracks. Alright. So it just took a huge unnecessary detour. Unfortunately. But at least, you know, you saw the location of a few missile tanks. That's not fair. I gotta scan one of those dragons. But see, I like how the game did eventually tell me, oh, hey, you might want to go back over there. You're like, I don't expect you to spoon feed everything to me, but at a certain point, it's like, 
I'm going the wrong way for like 10 whole minutes, then maybe the game should just be like, hey, you might want to turn around. Yeah, I, I really want this Mario movie to be successful so that Nintendo will maybe, you know, make more movies. And honestly, I don't think live action was ever the right way to go for them. I think, you know, with advancements in CG, it's that just makes sense to me. That's what they should be doing. Oh, I just went in a big fucking circle. All right, you know, screw this. I'll just walk through the lava. I don't care. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see, like, a CG Metroid movie or a Zelda movie, you know? That'd be awesome. So still no updates on Metroid Prime 4 as far as I'm aware. Oh, I gotta use a Super Bomb in here when I get them. Alright. Yeah, so... Please don't make it like Resident Evil, yeah, seriously. Um, so the, the first Resident Evil movie was cool when it came out, and at least it was somewhat relevant to the game. You know, they go into the lab, and there's, you know, and at least it had some reference to the, to the games. But then all of those sequels were just god-awful, I mean... The second one, sure, it had Nemesis and Jill and stuff, but... I don't know. Now, Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City wasn't a great movie, but I like how they tried to combine, like, plot elements from the remakes of 1 and 2. That was cool how they did that. Even if it was a little bit convoluted and people who didn't play the games might not know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, th this is what I like. I like how you find these computer systems and you can read these notes from, like, the engineers and the scientists. And there's even parts where you see entries where they're like, Samus Aaron is here! God damn it! Kill her! We're screwed! Yeah, they were doing some, like, Almost like Wolfenstein shit here, like Uber sold that, you know? If anyone remembers Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah, and okay, so back on the topic of, you know, console exclusives and whatnot, it's like, okay, Microsoft, you own, um, you own Bethesda, so what is id software working on? What is Machine Games working on? Like, when can we expect another Doom or another Wolfenstein? Like, you know? What the hell? Okay. I was worried that this was going to send me into the Phazon Mines, which I do not like. But Fendrana Dress is cool. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to Ra Raccoon City I thought was pretty good. Um, Elder Scrolls 6, yeah, when is that, when the hell is that going to come out, like 2027, you know? I mean, Starfield got delayed to next year, and I wouldn't be surprised if it gets delayed again. So now there's, there's like this rumor that like Microsoft intentionally tanked themselves to try and help the Activision deal go through, and it, I don't know if that's true, I hope not. It just doesn't seem logical to me. So that's what people are saying. They're like, supposedly, oh, Microsoft's holding back and delaying games and trying to devalue the their stock or, or something. They're, they're trying to manipulate the numbers in a way to help the deal go through. Yeah, 
there's an investigation now, sure. And we all know that Microsoft is no stranger to antitrust laws. I'll tell you, so right now, and when I was playing Eternal Darkness last month, I, I guess I never noticed when I was younger just how awesome the uh, music is in these GameCube games. It uses, like, pro logic and stuff. But, I mean, I don't know about you, but I didn't get my first surround sound system until, like, 2007, when I was an adult making good money. So there were a lot of um, advanced features on the GameCube that most people probably didn't know about because they didn't have the right TV or the right sound system. Like, on GameCube, you had to get a special component cable just to get progressive scan at 480p, and, and then you needed that for the Wii as well. But then on Wii U, it always seemed like um, the, the Prime Trilogy didn't look as good when you tried to play it on, on Wii and Wii U. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I my receiver that I bought like last year has support for Atmos. It has 4K 60 hertz pass through. Um, and Atmos is okay. It, it, to me, Atmos is an upgrade to stereo, but it may not sound as good as 5.1. In, in some cases, it just depends on usage. Like, games sound good in, in Atmos, but like music albums and stuff do not sound good in Atmos at all to me. And then, so here's the thing Series X has Atmos support, but PS5 has Sony's proprietary 3D audio that only works going through your TV speakers. It's like, well, what is the fucking point? And here's another thing, if you want to get a receiver that actually has 120 hertz support at 4K, you could be spending 700 bucks. It's crazy. So right now, um, my TV has two ports that can do 4K at 120 hertz, but one of them is designated for EARC, and that's, so, so of course that has to go to my receiver to get Atmos. So that's how I get Atmos on Series X. I have another HDMI cable using the EARC port and you have to use pass-through and stuff because my TV can only do Atmos through the built-in speakers. But it can pass through to the receiver, so that's how I get it on Xbox. Um, where the fuck am I going here? I think I gotta go to the... No, I gotta go... To the left or to the right? Let's... Well, I can't get up there yet. Yeah, the thing is, you can't get... Um, Atmos through, yeah, like you said, through a toss link or um, optical wire. Yeah, and so here's the thing. The new consoles don't have the optical ports anymore. Everything's HDMI now. So with the PS4 Pro and the One X, I could just run the optical wire out to my receiver and hook those up to my TV and it was fine. So that's the problem. My, even though my TV has 220 hertz 4K ports, one of them is reserved for EARC, which means only my Xbox or PlayStation can get 120 hertz. I have to keep sw swapping out wires and shit. So. It's really annoying.
Your neighbors complained at 2 p.m. Because of no... What? What a bunch of assholes. <laughs> that sucks. Most of my neighbors are seniors, so... And I, I only have one neighbor, and... And, um, yeah, most of my neighbors are seniors, and they don't hear very well. And we're not really... I, I, I'm kind of... Like, my apartment is kind of separate from some of the other units here. So, yeah, I've never gotten a noise complaint. I've actually gotten complimented on, on my guitar playing. Oh, these guys. Look at these fucking guys. Holy shit. You gotta use your sidestep ability. Smash the shell and then shoot him in the back. But yeah, this music is just freaking phenomenal. Although it's probably getting compressed for the stream. Yeah, my processor is the Ryzen 7 5800X, so it's, you know, I'm able to process things at a higher quality than I used to on my old setup, which is nice. Although everything still gets compressed. Actually, what I'm looking for is any kind of free or open source video editing software that doesn't compress everything. Because I had a couple Contra videos that, like, at the start of the month when I when I did Contra, you'll notice the first video had been in two parts. That was because it disconnected in the middle. So when I go to combine them together using Windows built-in software, it knocked it down to 1080p, 30fps, and created a bigger file in the process. So it's like, what the fuck? Okay, cool. Now, yeah, dude, when I looked at my parents' house, though, of course, I got some noise complaints. <laughs> Constantly. <laughs> okay. Good to know. I'll look into that. Da Vinci Resolve. Okay. Now, in your opinion, would it be worthwhile to get an Apple system for video editing? If, if I were to do that, because I had my eye on a uh, MacBook Air or possibly the Mac Mini system. Because I also do, um, you know, music recording and editing, and I'd like to be able to use GarageBand on an actual computer instead of my iPhone. So right now, the game and the stream are both running at 1440p, 60fps. Alright, so purple doors, I need the wave beam. Yeah, the wave beam is really cool in this game. Actually, so are all the extra beams. That's one thing that impressed me, was the way that you can just use your right C-stick to change guns, and, and I like how they updated all of the guns from the old games. They made them all unique.
Is this really what I think it is? This is where I get the ball boost, maybe? Or do I have to come back here after I get it? Really? Huh. Get out of here. Oh, I gotta go up here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Apple, Google, they're all invasive now. Microsoft is too, though. <laughs> what the hell? They're all invasive, unfortunately. Pick your poison at this point. Alright, so... Don't be a dick. I hate when they bump into me. Alright. Yeah, that's kind of what I was talking about. Right, so what happened was this, it was a comet or a meteor hit this planet and threw everything off or something and... Now, hang on. In this game, the comet hit Talon 4 and introduced Phazon to the environment, I want to say. And then that's what corrupted everything. Whereas in Prime 2, Echoes, a, there was like a meteor that hit and then threw off the space-time continuum and split it into two dimensions. I, I think that's what happened. Alright, so I don't think I can solve this puzzle yet. And I'm surprised the game hasn't yelled at me to, to let me know that yet. Yeah, I use Audacity if I'm just recording, like, acoustic guitar or spoken word, vocal parts, whatever, and I don't want to use effects, but I use Reaper if I want to use the VST plugins for my um, guitar modeling, uh, tone modeling software and stuff. I use Bias FX2, so I can use that to, with VST plugins and Reaper, whereas Audacity um, doesn't do as well with that, in my opinion. Like, I prefer to record with the effects in real time instead of trying to apply them after the fact. Oh, that's- oh, okay. I'll check that out. Yeah, I didn't know that Audacity got updated. Okay. So... Where the fuck am I going?
Okay, yeah, so this is a reference to the 12 artifacts you have to get to be able to enter the crucible, okay, of the, the temple. So yeah, there's there's interesting lore here that is completely optional if you choose to read it. So I go all the way over here and I think I'm supposed to have the double jump at this point. I really do. Um, I thought for sure I'd get the ball boost or the double jump over here, but I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do. Yeah, but what else is there, though? Yeah, I haven't played this in a while. I'm going to go back here and see if I can get in there. Oh, no, you know what? Okay, hang on. I can just go back this way. Ah, I can't fucking see anything. I hate those things so much. Alright. I need that. What is that? I need that. Yes, hang on. Hang on, I, I think I need whatever that is. Of course, it might just be a missile upgrade. Oh yeah, I was already in here. Okay, hang on. How do I get over there? I don't. I need the double jump to get over there. Okay. This is the point where you think the game would just be like, hey, dummy. Um, Alright. I'm gonna save again. Dark Samus appears in a post credit scene if you get 100% of the game. Because what happens is after you defeat the Metroid Prime, um, there's a post credit scene where you see Dark Samus emerge from its body or, or from the Phazon. That's where Dark Samus comes from, yeah. Or was it... Something with Samus's phase on suit falls off and then turns into I don't something like that. Right, so I need double jump to get there. Ow. Sorry about this, folks. I'm gonna have to go back to there and see what I missed. Oh, okay. So this is the game saying, hey, dummy. All right, so I was in the right place, but I didn't see what I had to do. And the game waits about 10 to 20 minutes before it says, by the way, Uh -huh. Dark Samus has a much more prominent role in Metroid Prime 2.
and I th and possibly in three, but I didn't play much of three because it just wasn't very good. It was a motion control game, which I don't like to start with. I really hope that if they ever bring the trilogy to Switch, they let us play three with no fucking motion controls. But, uh, I went in a big fucking circle. Alright. Right, but I had to go this way to be able to go this way. Got it. Right, yeah, Star Fox Zero was just bad. The problem with that game is even if they ported it to Switch and gave it a normal control screen, a control scheme, on one screen, then it's still a bad game. <laughs> I mean, t t in my opinion, there's no reason for Nintendo not to port every, every, like every single Wii and Wii U game to Switch in some capacity. But maybe things are just a little more expensive than I th think they are. I don't know. Yeah, that's if I was Nintendo, I'd be looking at ways to port or remaster like every game they possibly can because it'll sell, you know. All right, so I was already in here. I figured out how to raise up those platforms, but I didn't see a way to jump over to them. But now the game has confirmed that I, this is definitely the right place to go. So what did I miss? All right, well, there's a control panel there. So I went through all that trouble. All I had to do was scan that. that that's how this game is, though, basically. If you're not sure what to do, just open your visor and try to scan every fucking object you can. All right. Great. Oh, no. Is this double jump or ball boost? Ball, boost ball. Wrong on both counts. Yeah. Look, it's a half pipe, huh? What is this, Tony Hawk? Okay, now what? <laughs> Searching for other half pipe configurations. It's gonna send me all the way back. Uh Yes, I can think of several places where I can use that. And that's what's so great about the Metroidvania format. It's like every time you find a new item, you immediately remember like two or three spots where you can use it.
All right. So there is a lot of backtracking in this game because I am going to have to come back later when I have the wave beam and the double jump. Oh, that's right. Don't charge your gun because then they come after you. Now I remember. So look, this is one of the handful of cutscenes in the game. And it's very well done. And it's only like 10 seconds long. I absolutely miss the late 90s and early 2000s. Best time period ever. I miss 90s music. Like the alternative rock and the uh, grunge. Um, stuff like that. I, I don't miss the rap. And, the, and some of the pop music, but I just thought the 90s had awesome music and video games. Yeah, when I was in high school, I listened to, like... Alright, so I was in high school when Linkin Park came out, and they were a big deal. That's when That was, like, when new metal was new, you know? And that's why I still listen to Korn and stuff. That's what I grew up with. Alright, so... So if my health gets low, I'll just cheat a little bit and save the state. Oh, it's 10.30 already. Okay. Oh, I've already been playing for an hour. That's cool. Yeah, I, it's hard to believe that this game came out 20 years ago. I was in high school when Radiohead released Kid A and OK Computer, I think. That's why those are still two of my favorite albums. Wait. Oh, that's right. I have to go this way. Uh, I have to go back this way. Damn, all the, uh, this game has a lot of backtracking. Yeah, I listened to a lot of Nine Inch Nails back in the day. I just said if I get close to death, but then I fell in the fucking lava. That's what this game does, though. This is the one thing I don't miss about old games. Is the lack of autosave and the lack of checkpoints. So now I gotta go do this shit again. God damn it. All because I was trying to get a fucking... Whatever was in that puzzle room. Oh well. Oh. But that might have happened anyways, even if I had saved. Yeah, sometimes when I fall like in the lava or something, I panic. And then it's like, I, you, you lose like half your life before you figure out how to get out. It's horrible. No, this is not a very uh, forgiving game at all. Like, it's not that hard, but it's not that forgiving when you make a mistake. And some of the bosses are a real pain. Yeah, I know. Now, now, the, now you tell me. I know. Now you tell me where to go. Stupid game.
No. So what Super Metroid and the Metroid Prime games do is, when you die, you go back to the last time you manually saved. And that's also how Symphony of the Night did it. So this is before you had constant auto-saving and constant checkpoints and whatnot. So Metroid Dread gives you like a bajillion checkpoints, but then they use that as an excuse to just make the game super hard. Yeah, I didn't play the early Tomb Raiders. I didn't really get into it until Underworld. And by then, they had a good checkpoint system. But then, like, it's funny how you go back to, like, Doom back in, what, 93? And that game had didn't have checkpoints or autosaves, but you could manually save any time you wanted. And then if you died... It would just send you back to the beginning of that stage with no guns. Or with just the pistol. Yeah, so... So I scan this thing. That's all I had to do the whole fucking time? Wow. Yeah, I've seen speedrunning videos of this game, and they're just, they're awesome. Because they all go out of bounds. But I want to see... I, I'm sure I could find it, but I want to see a good speedrun of this game. I, I want to see a 100% speedrun with no glitches. No going out of bounds. That's what I want to see. Yes, you know, the cutscenes are not skippable, but this one's important because it just shows you exactly where you need to go to get out of here. Ow. Oh, okay. Now, when I've been sending the videos over to YouTube, I don't do any editing because I just don't really have the patience for it. But maybe with, like you said, maybe with the right software it would work. Yeah, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, um, definitely worth speedrunning. I don't know how long it took me to beat it on the Origins collection. I don't like you. Die, bastard. Wait, that's a... That is a baby, Shigoth. Oh, man. It's a baby. Get the baby. Okay. Now we gotta watch this again, unfortunately, but... Yeah, so these games absolutely punish you for not saving. Not on purpose, but... In, in old games, that was your punishment, though. Your punishment for dying is you've gotta replay... You know, whatever you did, after, did since your last save. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> nice.
Unfortunately, no other way out of here yet. So I do have to go this way and back through. Yeah, go back through Magmore Caverns into Talon Overworld. I'm not sure if I'm going to stream tomorrow or not. Tomorrow being Sunday. I mean, I'm not going to my parents' house for dinner like I usually do. But I'm still doing uh, shenanigans on Ask Wheels. So, I don't know. I might, may or may not stream tomorrow. We'll see. Because I'm trying to do, like, Tuesday... Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But it also depends on just what kind of mood I'm in, you know? So. Alright. Now, let's try this again. I just saved a state, which I don't like doing, but... Some of these games are so damn hard that there's, like, no shame in it, you know? Yeah, I was gonna say, that seems a little broken to me. Yeah, all this for an energy tank, I think. Uh, you know, if there's a missile tank up there, I'm gonna, like, lose my fucking mind. It's always been a thing in the Metroid game, just timing the damn ball jumps. Time it just right. Alright. I'm gonna get it one way or the other. I know I can get up there, it's just a matter of timing. But then you gotta do it again, ugh. Oh. That's an energy tank, though. Yeah. So I don't mind working for an energy tank, but if that was a missile tank, I was gonna fucking rage quit, I swear to god. <laughs> so this is my life now, I play games. And sometimes I record myself playing them, stream them, and sometimes I review the games. But I, I prefer just doing everything on Twitch because it's just easier, you know? I guess I'm just going this way then. Okay. Yeah, so unfortunately I wasted a lot of time in this stream because for, I went to Yeah, I went back to Talon Overworld first, and then had to come back here to get the Pendrana Drifts, and then had to do that part twice. And what they're going to do is they're going to send me back to Pendrana Drifts to get the double jump, and then I'm going to have to go up there so I can get into the phase on mines. That's all. But this game actually, uh, I would say, does a good job of preventing you from going to places you're not supposed to go to.
and you need a super bomb to blow this up. Just like in, uh, that, that's, this is a throwback to Super Metroid, how you had to blow up the bridge to get into Meridia. Of course, once I get the, um, various suit, then I won't have to worry about lava anymore. Magmore Fire Breathing Serpent that dwells in lava. Magmore's the first thing to Okay. Oh, he's got no eyes. As much as I want to get the original experience and all that, it's just... I can't imagine playing some of these old games with no same experience. Oh, and I think I'm playing on normal, by the way. I think you have to beat the game once to get hard, maybe. Or maybe not. I don't remember. But then they did that thing where this could, like, link up with the Game Boy Advance. If you had Metroid Fusion and the Game Boy Advance, then... And you hooked it up to your GameCube and this game, it would unlock the ability to play the original Metroid. It was like, what? Yeah, at, at this point, like... When I was younger and I was playing games more and I was really good at them, I used to think, oh, who plays on easy? Who plays on normal? But... I used to challenge myself to play on the hardest difficulty I could but now I'm like no I mean especially if you're streaming and you're not really good at multitasking like me it's like no there's no shame in it play whatever difficulty you're comfortable with you know and the thing is if companies add easier difficulties it's not going to hurt the people who aren't going to use it anyways you know like, there's no reason why From Software games can't have an easier difficulty. You don't want to play it, then don't play it. You know? You want to play on normal, then play on normal. Like... But for people like me in their 30s who are starting to lose their reflexes and... and stuff... and their patience, who want to keep their blood pressure down, then there should be easier difficulties. Well, there's no shame in it. Well, a couple months ago, I did play through Dark Souls 2 again, and I did pretty well. I think I died 10 or 15 times. But I gotta say, though, I have no patience for, like, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, Sekiro. Elden Ring, I thought, did a good job of balancing the difficulty for the most part. But some of the late-game mandatory bosses were just absurdly unfair. Okay, so we got a half pipe. We gotta time it just right. Perfect. So if I had done things correctly to begin with, I would have gotten here half an hour ago, you know? If I didn't die. And I didn't get lost. All right. This is where we want to be. You know why? I'll tell you why. Okay, so I want to say that there is a glitch or exploit that will let you go here, right at the start of the game. This is the double jump. 
Yeah, I thought they did a good job with the Dark Souls remaster. I, I mean, at least they improved the graphics and frame rate and stuff. But it's still a brutally tough game. I'd like to see a Dark Souls 1 mod that lets you respec at some point in the game. Instead of getting stuck with whatever build you're on. So I knew they were going to do this to me. I knew they were going to give me the double jump and then make me go all the way back to Fendrana Drifts. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. So let's go save. Oh, I heard that Elden Ring is getting, um, DLC soon, or next year or something. Well, now I can go over there, but I don't think I can do anything there yet. I think that's just the entrance to the final area. Yep, see? Now they're like, hey, you need to go all the way back there. Yeah, so at least a lot of newer games don't have unnecessary backtracking. It's 11 o'clock already, jeez. I tell you, I don't do so good with this time change. I'm exhausted. I'm also just kind of worn out just because I was really busy for Thanksgiving and stuff. It will be done, yeah. Space pirates are just kind of like first science at any cost. And that's the whole point of the game is the space pirates and in the, the first game the space pirates were trying to exploit the Metroids as a new energy source and or to turn into a new weapon. So You do eventually get fast travel in this game, I think. But you can't just go anywhere. There's only certain rooms you can travel between, I want to say. Like sun rooms or something. point in the game where they tell you, okay, go find the artifacts. So you can do this. So you gotta scan all of them to reveal the location. Yes. So you gotta scan all the totems to figure out where... But you get these little riddles to tell you where the um, artifacts are. But I'm probably gonna have to look them all up. Yeah, thank goodness this game came out, like, you know, after the internet got more prevalent. Because there's a lot of shit I would never have figured out without the internet. Alright. So, yeah, I want to say there's an exploit that will let you just immediately go get the, um... 
double jump. But I want to say at some point they released like a revised version of an of this, and I don't know what ROM I'm using. Yeah, like I said, this game looks pretty damn good on the Dolphin emulator on a high-end system. And mine's not even that high-end. I only have a 6600 XT. So it does stutter a little bit at 4K. But I can also run a PS2 emulator at 4K. Okay. Yeah, I keep looking at the clock. So I'm just gonna call it there. I was hoping to get further than that, but... Oh well. But this is why I didn't want to start all the way at the beginning, because it would have taken me an hour just to get through the prologue, you know? So... I'm going to go ahead and... I saved the game, but I'm also just going to save a state at the same time. Ah, oh, three hour drive. That sucks. Yeah, I'm glad my parents live right, right across town, but I just saw them on, fr on Thursday and Friday, so we're not going to do dinner on Sunday, which is tomorrow. I, you know, and that's the thing, for some reason, like... Yesterday felt like Sunday to me. And today felt like Monday. It's, I don't know. It's weird. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the stream here. Um, and... I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying I don't have any plans tomorrow, so I might stream, but I don't know what time. I tr you know, I, I typically want to be done before 10, but sometimes I'm late, like tonight. So, we'll see. Um, but thanks for watching, and... Oh, yeah, sounds like a plan, dude. All right. See you guys later. Give me your Xbox ID. Uh, yeah, I'll send it to you on Facebook. Okay, cool. See ya.